Morning, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. In our continuing effort to build a CNC plasma table, the next step on my docket is to install the X axis drive belt. So let's just jump right into it. So at this point, the stepper motor and the gearbox for the X axis aren't even installed. You can see there's nothing on that end plate. And in the last video, I mentioned that uh, I tried to put holes in various places where I could use the framework of the machine itself to be conduit to protect the wires. Well, I've pretty much failed on every account. It was a good idea, but I engineered myself into uselessness. Say good morning, Valor. I'm starting by bolting on the motor mount for what would either be a stepper motor if it was a direct drive or in this case I'm using a 10 to 1 planetary gear step down um, and you can see it immediately covers up that hole so good idea big fat fail <laughs> with the mount installed now I can put the gearbox on and we can proceed forward I apologize I keep stepping in front of the camera it was uh obviously a less an optimal place to put it. So this is the gearbox unit and kinda like I'm doing with the z-axis I cheaped out. Well not from a dollar standpoint they're not inexpensive but I wanted something neat and clean um, that uh, didn't have a, another open belt or set of pulleys. I wanted something very simple but at the same time I was concerned that direct drive would not have enough resolution in movement for the machine itself. Now that's a concern that as of yet is unfounded and it's something we can play with uh, at some point I can take this uh, planetary gear unit out and see if a direct drive right off the stepper with um, the driver set to quarter step increments would be enough. I chose a planetary gear setup because it came in a nice neat package but also because planetary gear setups like this have very very little backlash I really I don't think I'd be too afraid to try this on a router even definitely more than accurate enough for a plasma table there's gonna be more loss of accuracy in belt drive than there will be in this planetary gear so one of the complications I've run into with my design is that I've used big stepper motors, NEMA 34s, and their requisite components in the case of this planetary gear, and a fairly small belt drive specification. So for everything, I'm having to bore out the hole in the different cogs and things like that, and no exception here. So after taking some measurements, the first thing I did, as we learned in the last video, was I popped off the pressed on shoulder, made that go away real quick, and then into the lathe I went where I bored it out and made it fit. Now I made it fit with a slight press fit, um, and although there's a keyway on this planetary gear, I don't have a way to broach a keyway into this small little cog. The next thing that I started working on was the idler pulley that's at the opposite end and it's part of the tensioning assembly. I used the same size cogged pulley but it doesn't have any bearings in it so I had a couple of leftover shoulder bearings. Those are bearings that have got a little shoulder on the one side and I bored it out and then made these a press fit. And there it is. I think I made my first fidget spinner. Next I sketch out a block for the idler bearing. This will go at the other end and will be the tensioning part of the mechanism. I really wanted to use that little quarter inch shoulder bolt but I wound up drilling a wrong size hole and in the end it was just a regular quarter inch bolt. As I've mentioned before this is the part where I'm kinda of winging it. There's only a, a couple of critical dimensions in this part and, and critical even is probably too strong a word. So I went out and got a scrap block of aluminum out of the pile and uh, started cleaning it up and carving away all the parts that, well, all the parts that weren't the tensioning block I needed. 
Here's where I'm cutting the slot for where the idler pulley is going to go. I wanted this to be a, a pretty close fit, so I make a couple of passes, and I was reading the DRO at this point, and sure enough, fit fine. Here's where I made my mistake that uh, precluded the use of that little quarter inch shoulder bolt. Uh, for some reason, you know, I had quarter inch on my mind and so I took a number seven drill and drilled all the way through and then came back and followed up with a quarter inch hole on just one side for the shoulder. When I did the test fit of that quarter inch hole and the shoulder bolt fell all the way in, I realized, oh crap quarter inch shoulder bolt like this has got a 5 16 thread. Oh well, it's going to be quarter inch now. So over to the tapping fixture I went and I blew in a quarter inch hole. So let's talk about tapping real quick. Um, I use this fixture whenever possible because it's quick and it's easy. Uh, it was originally purchased by my father after he'd had a stroke and he couldn't hold pieces as steady. Um, Super handy, but not necessary. You don't have to have one of these. So so this next hole I'll do in a more traditional manner. This is the back of the tensioning block where I need a piece of quarter inch threaded rod that'll pull the entire block back, tightening up the belt. I started by drilling a, a number seven hole. And then with that done, I took it over and just put it in a vise. I use a little cutting fluid and then this alignment block that my father made long before I was born. I hold it on top and carefully thread the tap in using a tapping handle. That's all there is to it. The tapping fixture is just a nice convenience. Next I turn my attention to making a way that I could rigidly attach the belts to the x-axis trolley. And I decided I would use these little pieces of aluminum angle that I had. Someone had, had just used them as little angle braces, but they were almost exactly the right size, and they even had a couple holes I could reuse. So I had to shorten up each leg a little bit to make them right. So back to the mill they went, and a couple of passes later, they were all ready to go. This is the x-axis carriage and what I'm doing is I'm drilling for a couple of more threaded holes of course that are going to hold that anchor point on that I just milled out of angle iron. So this is where I'm going to show you the third way that I do most of my tapping and it's another way that uh, just about anybody can do and the only thing about it is if you're going to screw up you screw up faster. So just like with hand tapping, I used the guide block, I used a good tap, a little oil, but this time instead of putting the tap in a tap handle, I put it in my cordless drill. Put it on low speed and run it in. The thing about this is you lose the tactile feel of how the chips are cutting. And depending on the tap you use, backing up and breaking the chip is more or less, but always to some degree important. So if you keep that in your mind and just do it as a matter of course that helps also keeping it straight with a guide block reduces my risk of catastrophic failure to create the clamp on the back of the anchor point I used a piece of half inch square aluminum stock drilled a couple holes tapped a couple of holes and that's all it takes the last part of the tensioning assembly is this plate, and it is what, uh, lack of a better term, it's the backstop. It's what the threaded rod goes through for the uh, tensioning end of the assembly. I made this out of a piece of quarter inch aluminum plate. The only critical dimension is the spacing between those two slots. They match up with a set of holes that are already drilled and tapped in the y-axis end plate. So beyond that spacing, this whole thing's pretty ad-lib by nature. So I did a little drawing that kind of reflects the shape of the y-axis end plates, printed it out, and then I'm kind of coloring outside the lines really is all I'm doing. 
It reminded me of things I've seen Darista do where he will print out patterns. I glued it down on the aluminum like he often does and cut it out. Um, I thought about doing this on the router, but I've got a lot of experimenting to do with speeds and feeds uh, to make the router really cut aluminum well. The best thing to do would have been to have this part be integral to the Y-axis plate, in which case this whole part would have been a moot point. And with that part completed, the only thing left to do is string the belt and put some tension on. You can see where that last part bolts onto the end of the Y-axis plate right here, and how the threaded rod goes through it to the block holding the idler pulling. That little belt is amazingly stout. Once I had it all clamped down and tensioned up, I was able to push the carriage by hand and it would rotate that 10 to 1 planetary gear unit you see here. Alright, so we've got all the belts on. The Y axis was done the previous episode. X axis is done now. Which means the next video will be installing cable track, motors, doing a little wiring, and doing the first test runs. In the meantime, keep your shop warm and I'll see you next time. Take care everybody.